when they look at you as a threat, what do you say? Well, I don't think I'm causing the problems for the Democratic Party right now, Neil. I think uh, the party has its own problems. The polls show uh, President Biden losing to Donald Trump, who is the presumptive nominee of the Republican Party. I'm in a better position to run against Donald Trump than any of the Democrats. Now there's talk that he might not be a Democrat much longer, at least not run for president as one. An independent party bid being considered, we're told, uh, and he'll uh, outline it next Monday. We don't know, but there is another entrant in that Democratic race who's kind enough to join us right now, Marin Williamson, a 2024 Democratic presidential candidate in her own right. Um, Ms. Williamson, very good to have you back with us. Thank you. It's always nice to be with you. I appreciate your having me. Um, what do you think of what Bobby Kennedy Jr. is considering? Well, I think every candidate has to make their own decisions about their strategy, where they feel they belong. You know, politics is part science, part art, and part gut call. Um, listen, I celebrate democracy. I celebrate people being in the arena. And uh, he needs to do what he feels is best for him. Well, you know, the argument has gone from some of the, his people you talked to uh, that the, it, it wouldn't be a case of him leaving the party, but the party having long ago left him. And then I catch up and hear your remarks the other day. I think you were at Dartmouth, where you said um, the, the Democratic Party, I hope I'm quoted correctly, is now guided by the corporatist element of the party, represented, among others, by Joe Biden. You, you went on to say uh, that the party's business ties are a form of economic tyranny and our governing principle is no longer democracy. That sounds like someone who's also dissatisfied with the Democratic Party. Well, I think a lot of people, both Democrats and Republicans, feel like, you know, I didn't leave my party, my party left me. I'm still holding on because I believe in the traditional values of the Democratic Party. Um, there's a kind of the Democratic Party and the Republican Party that I grew up with are just so different than the parties as they exist now. But many people within the Republican Party and within the Democratic Party are holding on, trying to course correct. And I think what this has to do with is whether corporate profits should be our governing principle or democratic and humanitarian values should be our governing principle. And I believe that the Democratic Party's traditional Rooseveltian values were the unequivocal, unabashed advocacy for the working people of the United States. And I'm holding on to that. And many people within the Democratic Party are holding on to that and trying to course correct the party so that the party can more effectively help course correct the nation. But the party is doing little to help you or recognize yeah, you or true. talk to you or include you in debates, much like it doesn't want to include Robert F. Kennedy Jr. in debates. So are, are you fighting hard for a party and a people that just don't like you? Well, look, the way Bobby has described the situation is not inaccurate. His decision has been to apparently bolt and uh, go independent. That's not, you know, like I said, some of this is gut call. Right. That's not what my heart is leading me to do. You know, there's one thing that can override corruption in any system, and that's the people. We need, I keep saying, we need a revolution at the ballot box. Part of the problem is with an, when any political party stands in front of the people. The political parties need to stand in the back, let the people decide who should be the candidate, who should be the nominee in any election, and then the party should come in. So what's happening right now is that the DNC has overtly indicated that it sees its job as helping uh, Joe Biden get elected. So it has made the effort to suppress any other candidacy. And uh, that was a problem for Bobby, and it's a problem for me. But like I said, right now, I'm, I'm holding on. For right now, I'm staying where I'm staying. Got it. Um, what did you think of the administration's, it's, pr it's a pretty clear it's an about face on, on the border and the border wall and being open to that and now returning Venezuelans who try to get into this country, uh, back to their country. Uh, it, it is a 180. Um, what do you think? What well, the president is saying that this was money that was allocated by Congress. He's saying that he had wanted it to be reallocated. He didn't have the legal authority to do that. I think the bigger question is the question— Do you really buy question, that? Do you really buy that? I, don't I know. mean, I mean, I wasn't born yesterday. I mean, but that when you say you've changed your mind, just say you've changed your mind. I mean, John F. Kennedy taught us that that's okay to do. Bill Clinton, uh, with the welfare to work thing, he fought that. Then when it was going and proceeding quite well, he not only you know, joined the parade, he ultimately led it. Do you think the president is misrepresenting that he just 
did a change of heart. It's okay to have a change mm -hmm. of heart. I, I don't know. I have no way of knowing. Uh, maybe we will know. What I'm interested in is the issue of the wall itself. To just build a wall in this situation, you've got 2,000 miles of border here, almost. If we just build a wall, we're just treating the symptom. We're not treating the cause. What I would do, what I will do as president, if I'm president, is to deal with the root causal problems here. Why are people so desperate that they are leaving the countries that they are in? But a wall helps, homes? doesn't it? Doesn't a wall help? Because other Only presidents or both parties in the past have recognized that. But you have yeah, to start you know and deal with the sieve, right? Mm -mm. No, I'll tell you something, Neil. If people want to, they're going to start building tunnels. So it's, that's not your fundamental full-time permanent answer. We have to address these root causes. Some of these root causes, for instance, have to do with some of our sanctions. If we're keeping these sanctions in Cuba, keeping our sanctions in Venezuela, which are not having the desired effect, they're not hurting the people that we say but we want to hurt. But all those were in effect, hurting... Ms. Williamson, during the Trump administration. The only difference then was that it was pushing and building a wall. And the numbers are a lot smaller than they are today. What's wrong with addressing, as you say, what you, you know, getting at these root causes, but in the meantime, dealing with what has been a surge, unlike anything we've ever seen, uh, this wall to deal with it simultaneously? And also, we also know that for a fraction of the money that we spend, the billions of dollars that we spend on that wall, it is established. If we fix our asylum, sy asylum system, spend a fraction of that money fixing the asylum system— The money's system, already allocated and, and, and agreed to. Why not just go ahead and spend well, now, it and see now what you're, the hell now happens, you're right? Wait, but th now you're agreeing with what Biden said, because no, Biden I'm, I'm said that the money was already allocated. He's saying that that's the reason for his changing his mind. I think it's fair to say that's probably not the reason. But if yeah. the money's allocated, and a lot of this stuff was sitting for years, just rotting, what's wrong with putting it to good use and just uh, still addressing what you want to address? Well, what I want to address is the fact that if you could spend a fraction of that money, fix the asylum system, and it has always been also been established. If you spend money helping these people, helping them become established in this country as legal citizens, don't make it so difficult. We don't make it so difficult. We spent billions so, helping so, these people from all over Mexico no, and uh, South. Uh, still, I mean, it, it, to little avail, right? Neil, let me finish my sure. sentence. What I'm talking about is that it's established that within a year, these people are self-sufficient. They are contributing to the economy, and they are contributing to the economy in ways that native-born Americans are usually not interested in doing. So all I'm saying is we need to find a better way. We can't just treat symptom. And also, I think we need to look at our war on drugs, because these drug cartels—let's not forget the part that the drug cartels play in creating this horror and this violence that people are seeking to escape. If we start thinking about a very different about America's war on drugs, what we're going to do is take away a lot of their black market. And I think that's the kind of thing we need to be thinking about. So, bottom about nine, well. uh, no wall for you. You're sticking with the Democratic Party. Oh, I don't, I don't think the Democratic Party is always saying what I just said to you. No, no, actually, it's not. Uh, Marianne Williamson, thank you so much. It was good, very good seeing you. Thank again. you. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.